It seems that we now have the new prices for the Orc releases in Euros, Pounds and Dollars. Maybe there's one kit that's a bit less expensive than I thought, but it's fairly bad news for the Battle Wagon. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're just taking a quick look at the prices for the new Orky pre-orders that are coming on Saturday. We've finally got the actual Codex release, and as well as that we've got a bunch of new kits, the Boss Bunker, Beast Snagger Boys, Squig Hog Boys, Beast Boss and Zogrod Wart Snagger, and also a repackaged Battle Wagon, as we'll get on to. For the core releases we have the Codex, Dice, Data Cards and Combat Patrol Box, that's all relatively standard stuff. The Orc Codex is £30, $50 or €37.50. Euros 50. I'm sure it'll be nice to actually get your hands on it, after the only way to get it for quite a while has been out of that Beast Snagger box. The green Orky dice are £20, $35 or €25, Euros, in line with the standard prices. I guess quite a cool accessory. I always find that Games Workshop's dice are a little bit pricey for my tastes. The data cards are £15, $25 or €20. Euros. I guess could be handy enough for certain stratagems and things. And the Combat Patrol box is $85, $140 or €110. Euros. We've been over it a couple of times. You get the Warboss and the Mega Armor, three of the nice new Death Copters, 20 boys and a Death Dread. I still think it's a pretty decent kit for getting into Orcs, though it certainly has sunk a fair bit in my opinion. Ever since we learned that the boys are just monopos, you can't build your choice of sluggers and choppers. You're limited to one Orc knob, one Orc with a heavy weapon, three shooters and five choppers per mob. I certainly wouldn't say they're unusable, but nowhere near as the multi-part plastic boys kit, which does appear to be remaining on sale, it appears to have new packaging now, so I'm going to guess that one's going to be around for the long haul. It does feel a little bit strange to me to have two different boys being sold with really quite different aesthetics. They certainly still look like orcs, and I do like both kits, but they might just look a little bit odd side by side on the tabletop. In any case, despite that, I still think that the Combat Patrol is a fairly reasonable buy for newer orc players. It does get you a lot of green skins on the table for relatively cheap. Otherwise, here are the more interesting prices for the month, with the new Orc models and the repackaged Battle Wagon. Basically, what's happened with the Battle Wagon is that they used to sell both a regular Battle Wagon and an upgrade sprue that included the Death Roller and a few other bits, but they now seem to have lumped both kits together in one big kit for £60, $100 or €80. Euros. Out of any of the prices, it's maybe the most disappointing out of the lot. Previously, the same model was £45, and you had the option whether or not to buy the extra sprue for an extra £9 on top of that. It means that you could acquire a battle wagon for cheap if you didn't want the death roller, but now you don't have the option of that, you literally just have to buy the whole thing together, and what's more it costs slightly more than it did before, basically jumping up 10%, up to £60 from 54 I guess it's not the biggest change ever for Games Workshop price increases, but it does still seem a bit on the excessive side. You could buy an entire Storm Raven gunship for £65, and that's only a little bit more. So not exactly stellar news if you were wanting to pick up a battle wagon. It's going to be interesting to see what the new kill rig comes out at. I suspect it's going to be a bit more than that. Maybe I'd loosely guess somewhere in the £70 to £80 range. In any case, moving on to the other kit. The next one is the Big Head Boss Bunker. That's £40, $65 or €55. Euros. Again, perhaps on the upper end of what I was expecting. The Miasmic Malignifier for the Death Guard and the Hammerfall Bunker for the Space Marines were both £35, so this is an increase on that. Still though, really quite a fun little orky fortification. Not a bad place to put a whole load of boys with a bunch of DACA, and I'm sure that they're going to be fairly popular. Next up, we have the individual release of the Beast Snagger Boys. They're £31.50, $50 or €40. Euros. That seems around about right for Games Workshop's current standards right now. They cost a little bit less than, say, the Battle Sister Squad, which is a multi-part kit with more options, and a little bit more than those repackaged Cadian Shock Troops maybe representing the extra model that you get in the kit. Seems maybe about a more acceptable balance for a unit that is supposed to be a horde unit, but at the same time does have some really quite big, chunky, nice new plastic sculpts, and I think it's quite helpful that you get the extra boys in here, so if you do buy multiple squads, you don't need to include extra thump guns or anything. Moving on, and we have the Squig Hog Boys, Smasher Squig, and the little Gretchen Mounted Bomb Squig. These guys are £36.50, $60 or €45. Euros. And to be honest, these compared with Games Workshop's pricing standards really aren't too bad a deal. Earlier in the year we had Scorpet Destroyers for the Necrons and Space Marine Primaris Outriders. They both cost £36.50 just for the three models. And to be honest, I was kind of expecting that that would be what the Squig Hog Riders would cost just on their own. I quite like the way that you get three big chunky models, a little bomb squig, 
plus the extra knob, which is essentially an entire extra character and can deal out a hefty amount of impact hits with his Smasher Squig in game. I guess points wise, the Squig Hogs are a fair bit cheaper than Scorpex or the Outriders, but that isn't something that has usually limited Games Workshop before, say with units like the very, very pricey Cerberus Raiders. Overall, seems like a relatively decent value kit. I guess the only slight issue might be if you wanted quite a lot of the Squig Hog Riders, but weren't really too bothered about the Smasher Squigs, you might end up with a few extras of those knob characters left over. I suppose you might be able to resell them on eBay or something, or maybe with a little bit of conversion work, you might be able to turn one of those Smasher knobs into a regular Squig Hog, perhaps. Might require a little bit of creativity and a few spare parts, though. Finally, we have two out of the new Orky characters, the regular Beast Boss, not the Squigasaur mounted one, and that new Runtured special character, Zogrod Wartsnagger. The Beast Boss on the Squigasaur is £23.50, US dollars or €30, Euros, and Mr. Zogrod with his fabulous hair is £26.50, $40 or €32.50. Euros. The Beast Boss is more or less what I would have expected, in line with, say, the Death Guard Lord of Virulence, pretty standard for a nice chunky new character miniature. Zogrod Wartsnagger, on the other hand, is just surprisingly expensive for a much smaller model, and to be honest, one that I'd be much less inclined to pick up in-game. It's certainly a bit of a fun sculpt, but it does make me wonder why Games Workshop priced him more than the War Boss, who's quite clearly a bigger miniature, costs more points in-game, and maybe is a bit more of a glamorous orc model than the random outcast Runtherd, who tries to train his grots to be a little bit better. I'm going to guess that just somewhere in Games Workshop's pricing strategy, They've decided that if you want to buy a special character as opposed to a generic character, that's going to cost you a little bit more. If we're looking at recent releases, then this guy costs the same as Lilith Hesperax for the Drakari. I'm not really sure that their logic really holds true for this guy though. I think it's just got a very different feel if you're getting a new sculpt of a much-loved character, as opposed to one that you've plucked out of the lore from ages ago, and not all that many people are attached to right now. It is just interesting to see the bizarreness of Summer Games Workshop's pricing strategy in action once again. So anyway, I think that just about wraps it up. Pricing-wise, I'd say it's largely good news on the Squig Hog Boys, about what you'd expect for the Beast Snaggers and the Beast Boss, and perhaps a touch more than I would have hoped for for the Battle Wagon, Boss Bunker, and Zogrod. Let me know what you think down in the comments anyway. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, I'll certainly keep up with Games Workshop's news and releases as they come out. Finally, if you'd like to help support the channel, I would just like to mention one way in which you can do so, which is my Element Games affiliate link down in the video description. If you were thinking about picking up some new Orc releases, or anything else 40k related for that matter, Element Games is a discount retailer based in the UK. They give between 10 and 20% off Games Workshop's miniatures, and have always been very reliable in my experience. If you buy anything after clicking the link in the video description, a small amount goes to help support Allspets Tactics without costing you any more whatsoever. Can just be a small way to help out if you were thinking about buying something anyway. I do also have an Amazon link down there as well for any of you who happen to be in the USA or Canada. That works much in the same way, but for any Amazon purchase whatsoever, again just click it before buying and a small amount goes to help support the channel without costing you any more. A massive thank you to you guys who have been using those it really does help out. In any case, thank you very much for watching, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.